is Del Tulu, and today we're going to be discussing the music of Skip James. Today's lesson is going to feature the song Devil Got My Woman Blues, an arrangement very typical of Skip James's individual style, hailing from Betonia, Mississippi, <clears throat> which is the midland of the state. <clears throat> so let's get ourselves together let's get prepared in starting this lesson what we're gonna have is uh, what I highly recommend is having finger picks plastic finger picks one for the thumb one for the finger if you don't have finger picks that is okay you can play just basically without them if you don't have them available to you any guitar will do for this matter this is not a slide based song. This is entirely based on just regular chordings and, and so forth. No slide is necessary. <clears throat> and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tune to each other first and foremost. Now Skip James, as many might know, like to play in the D minor tuning, which he was very famous for playing. It is a tuning that is very much associated with his repertoire and it was also a style that was was uh, sampled by Robert Johnson <clears throat> in some of his works as well so what we're gonna do is this song Devil Got My Woman is tuned exactly in the dad fat tuning that's the vestibule tuning with the only difference being on the third string being dropped down to an F note instead of an F sharp. So what we're going to do is we're going to tune to each other. My first string is going to be a D. So if you have your guitar ready, let's tune to each other. This is the top string. This is my D. This is my fifth string, which would be an A. This is my fourth string. This is a D. This is my third string. This is the F. This is my second string. It is an A. And this is my bottom string. This is a D. And when you strum it all together, it's going to sound like this. And this is a tuning that Skip James uh, played a pre uh, predominant amount of his songs that are based around this tuning. So once you've got this tuning down, you'll be able to adapt to his other songs. Devil Got My Woman is utilizing the very unique chord shapes, the very typical chord shapes that are found in his repertoire. And I know that I've discussed in my other DVD lessons, especially uh, with Cypress Grove Blues, the same kinds of chord shapes are going to reappear. And I'm talking about the uh, what would be the five chord arrangement, which, which sounds like this. <laughs> This is going to make an appearance in this song. <clears throat> Again, these are uh, like a recycling of the very typical riffs and licks that are associated with Skip James. Definitely uh, make an appearance in Devil Got My Woman Blues. <clears throat> so now that we've got our uh, tuning, uh, we've got our guitar tuned to each other, also the recommended finger picks and an associated guitar, I would like to discuss a little bit about the uh, arrangement of the right hand, the positioning of the right hand in your strumming techniques. <clears throat> now, I've always preached and advocated in learning Delta Blues music where you have your palm of your right hand, the palm, the outer lining of your palm is going to be resting, situated above the sixth and fifth strings like this. Your hand, your right hand, is going to run diagonally across the guitar like this. 
So if you're making a shadow puppet, you just tilt it like this. <clears throat> the outer lining is going to hang here, and your thumb is going to be responsible for playing the sixth, fifth, and fourth strings, while your index finger is going to be playing chords or picking out individual strings on the first, second, and third strings. So, uh, an example of a lick in Skip James's song will be like this. Notice that the thumb is responsible for the 6th, 5th, and 4th strings, and the index finger is playing the individual strings on the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd strings. And you will have to implement the finger picking method, which I will discuss later on into this DVD. But it is a good uh, practice and a good standard principle of having the right hand discipline mimic exactly what I was just saying. And I will discuss more about how that makes a role in the Devil Got My Woman song blues. <clears throat> so, the first part, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the introduction here. And the introduction is going to sound like this. It's going to go like this. Pretty simple, very standard introduction piece in Skip James's music. And what you're doing is you're, you're uh, playing a turnaround, this introduction, which is basically a chromatic rundown, starting with the open string on the third string. Then you go to the first string, third string. The first fret, third string. Then the second fret, third string. Then the third fret, third string. So all together it's... four notes and then you get into this chording which appears next so the first four notes are like this so after he plays that single run on the string He's going to be playing a chording shape, which is basically going to be <clears throat> this shape, which is going to be on the third and fourth fret. And what you're going to be doing here is you're taking your index finger and you're going to be placing it on the second string, third fret. Your middle finger is going to be placed on the fourth fret, third string. And you're going to play down strokes going from the third, second, and first string down. very simple and a very typical Skip James chording. So all together it's one, two, three, four. And with my right hand I'm doing these kind of up strokes with my index finger. So you do like six strums of this chording. So from the beginning it's like this. And then you you slide over to the second and third fret maintaining the same fingering. So your index finger is going to be on the second string, second fret, and your middle finger is going to be on the third fret, third string. It'll sound like this. And then you slide it over to the first and second fret. So all in all from the beginning it's like this. Slide. So when he's on the second and third fret, he's not spending that much time in it. It's a series of three strokes. Three or four strokes. Then he slides to the first and second fret, maintaining that same fingering. And in the middle of that, he 
with his ring finger, he plays this accent on the second fret bottom string. And that is that beginning part of the introduction. <clears throat> so all together is like this. So when he's over in this this first and second fret position he does that little accent it's just one note he plays an open string in the top after that and he ends that progression that turnaround progression with that top bass note and that play that open string on the top, you play an additional three notes that will, that are basically only situated in the base of the strings, the sixth and the fifth string. So it'll be like this. And by doing that, you play the top string open, then the third fret top string, then the open string on the fifth string then the open string and the top string. So from the beginning of that introduction, it will be like this. Fairly simple. next part of that introduction it would sound like this. And in that part all he's doing is he's playing it will be a series of three notes. You will be playing this part which will be the open string on the second string. Second fret second string. Then open string on the second string. So one, two, three, and then he goes to this chord on the third and fourth fret, which I discussed earlier. So from the top of that, that bass string will sound like this. six strokes. So the introduction from from the absolute beginning will sound like this. <clears throat> Again, fairly simple introduction is very typical of Skip James's other introductions throughout his repertoire. But the mo most important thing is to concentrate on these chordings that are based on the first, second, third, or fourth frets. And playing that tur turnaround in the chromatic fashion. And uh, so that will wrap up the introduction of the song and we'll get over the more complicated portions of the verse here in a moment. Okay, continuing on from the lesson. Uh, earlier we talked about the introduction, which was recycling the main components that are so typical of Skip James's style, meaning the introduction is always going to be situated on the first, second, third, and fourth frets. And he likes to utilize this this turnaround chord, this shape, which, at, which is first situated on the third and fourth fret. Very typical for this D minor tuning. 
And so we're not going to spend too much time with the introduction because it's covered predominantly throughout his repertoire and throughout his catalog. <clears throat> In this phase of the song, we're going to be uh, talking about the verse, and this is the characteristic licks that that uh, distinctively identify Devil Got My Woman Blues, and meaning it's when you hear this lick you know exactly that this is Devil Got My Woman Blues. What he's doing is, I'm going to play a little bit here, for example, the verse. I'll play it right after the introduction here, so it'll be like this. Mm -hmm. That is the verse, and we're going to break it down piece by piece here shortly. Now, in kicking off that introduction, obviously, the end of this introduction is rested on this third and fourth fret. And he, and he plays that. Notice what I'm doing with the right hand is this, this flicker, this pinching. When he plays this, he transitions, he eases into this lick, which is based on the seventh fret. And this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, portray this, examine this very closely, because this is a very intricate and very distinctive lick that you have to get right. And it's a very sensitive lick that if you're playing it as a chord, it's not going to sound right. It's not going to sound like what you hear in the LP. <clears throat> and basically what he's doing, in playing this lick, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be based on the 7th fret. He plays something like this. that here shortly. What he's doing is in order to get into this seventh fret, he's going to be starting this accent on the second fret. And what you're going to be doing is with your index finger, you're going to be fingering the third string on the second fret. And with your middle finger, you're going to be fingering the bottom string on the second fret. So the fingering is going to be like this. And what you're going to be doing is playing a double stop. And I have noted that in the tablature. But this double stop, meaning your thumb, with your right hand position like this, your thumb is going to come down and your thumb is going to be hovering over the third string. Your index finger is going to be, is going to be tucked underneath the first string. So you have a position like this. Now what you're going to be doing is the thumb is going to be responsible for playing only the third string and the index finger is only going to be responsible for plucking the first string. Those are the only two strings that are going to be played in this sequence. So a double stop will be will sound like this. With this position on the second fret, fret it will sound like this. See what I'm doing with my right hand, pinching together. The second string is not going to be uh, pl played at all. And really what he's doing here is in order to initiate this lick on the seventh fret, he, he, he plucks the second fret sequence once and he begins his slide all the way to the 7th fret. Also laid out for you in the tablature. So he kicks it off like this. One. And 
and then you're going to maintain the same positioning on the seventh fret, meaning your index finger is on the seventh fret third string, middle finger is on the seventh fret bottom string, and you're going to be maintaining the same position with your right hand with the double stop motion. And in this lick, he plays this, uh, this lick on the seventh fret about six times, five, five to six times. And he plays it, oh, it's all quarter notes. It'll be like this. From the beginning, it'll be like this. And then he's going to do something to expand this lick and resolve it on the 9th fret 3rd string and it'll, and it'll sound, end up sounding like this. And that's how it's going to be laid out. So after he plays this a double stop on the seventh fret about six times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> and we'll go over that. So after the first uh, five strums, six strums. One, two, three, four, five. On the sixth tone. What you're going to do is you're going to take your pinky and you're going to finger the ninth fret bottom string while your index finger is going to be still positioned on the seventh fret third string. And you're going to play the double stop again as well, meaning you're only playing the third and the first string at the same time. No other strings will be uh, plucked in this instance. So, in all together, it's this sequence. One, two, The transition is here. Six. And after you, you only play that one time, and then the next note, it's going to be basically, it's going to be like an appreggio on the seventh, eighth, and ninth fret, and it'll, you'll just play this sequence after this. The sequence coming up will be like an appreggio, like this. And that is going to be played, it's going to be a succession of three notes to fall after that. That is going to be on the bottom string on the 7th fret, then the 8th fret 2nd string, and then you resolve the final note in that sequence is going to be on the third string, ninth fret. So one, two, three. And then you end on the, the top on the bass string. So altogether it will round out like this. And I know the transition there is a bit hard, trying to maintain the discipline of the double stop. So we'll take it from the 7th fret, and I'll count it down, it'll be like this. One, two, 